All right, welcome to our boots on the ground session, everyone. I'm so glad to see so many of you in here with us this afternoon. Uh, my name is Amy Bolas, and I'm the VP of Development, uh, P2P and field-based fundraising here at CTF. Uh, I'm a little bit of a newer staff, and so I'm having a great time uh, getting to meet so many of you today and yesterday. And so thank you for being here. Uh, but I'm not important. Who's really important are my panelists here today. I'm just facilitating uh, for these wonderful experts that are going to talk to you about boots on the ground and how you can build a community. Uh, in your in your respective homes and neighborhoods and areas. So uh, I'm gonna let everybody take a minute or so to introduce themselves to you. And then uh, the point of this session is to make sure that you get tools and tips and tricks so that you can go home and continue to either build a new community or grow an existing community. So we wanna make sure that you guys get to participate as well. So I will have some colleagues that will have a microphone if you have questions, um, but I'll get started. We'll ask a few things of our experts and then you guys can also um, make sure that you get your questions answered, okay? All right, well, so without further ado, again, these are the important people. And I'm gonna start, we'll start down at the end with Leslie Oslitsa. I'm gonna let her introduce herself. Okay, I'm Leslie Oslitsa from Arkansas. Uh, do, I have volunteered, uh, we found out Katie had neurofibromatosis in 1999. So we've been doing this, this is going on 23 years now. Um, yep, and that's it. <laughs> Awesome, and Sean, Sean Hackett, go ahead. Hi guys, I'm Sean Hackett. I am the Cupid's Undie Run event director here in Chicago. Um, I am unaffected, but have you know found you guys to be a family and a community. Um, I have been a participant for 10 years now and an event director for five building community in different ways. Thank you, that's awesome, Sean. All right, you're up, Erin. Sure. Um, my name's Erin Modine. I am the mother of um, an NFR. My, my little guy just turned three. So um, totally frank, this is a brand new community t for me, right? One that I never wanted to be a part of, but I'm very happy to be a part of. Um, and so we're, we're just taking it one step at a time. Sam's okay right now. Um, and we'll see, we'll see what lies ahead. So it's really nice to be here. Thank you for the welcome. Thank you. And Marie, do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah. Hi, everyone. My name is Marie Gerald. I, um, I was a longtime volunteer for the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society for 20 years in their team and training endurance sports uh, program. So definitely boots on the ground and through friends of friends of friends. And Aaron and I actually know each other from that program. Uh, so through friends of friends, I ended up here today. And I also have my own non for profit now. So I'm with you trying to build a community as well. So thank you for letting me be here. Thanks. Yeah, we're glad to have you too. Thank you. All right, you're Naomi. Uh, my name is Naomi Chuka. I am from South Dakota, and my eight-year-old son has NF type one, and I have recently started building the NF community in the state of South Dakota and with our walk and several other events. That's great. Well, again, uh, thank you all for being here. I know everybody appreciates you giving us your time. So um, I think what we'll do is I want to start with some of you might be uh, new may not have things going on in your community and want to maybe start from ground zero so i think we'll start with like what if you're new to building a community um, how do you start a community and start growing it and then we'll say like now you have a community we'll talk about some things that you can do once you have a community and how you can grow it and sustain it all right so i'm going to throw some questions out you guys can feel free to raise your hand and just say like i'd like to add something at any point but i'll try to maybe direct it at one of you as best we can, okay? All right, let me see, or I can't, <laughs> can't ask good questions if I can't see. All right, um, I think it would be good, maybe we'll start with you, Naomi, since you're starting to build a community, like you said, in your state. Um, how do you identify people? How do you find, whether they're volunteers, fundraisers, sponsors, how do you get started? Um, I first reached out with doing local media things, and I found other families that have been affected with NF in our area. And then just making that personal connection with the parents, um, teachers, things like that. And then after you have those personal connections, you reach out and ask if they have an interest. And most of the time you don't even have to ask, they just take the initiative and find you and want to know more and how to get involved. So I think it's just reaching out and kind of building those relationships and then keeping them going. That's good. 
And Marie, I'm going to ask you to maybe help with that one too, since you said you're starting your own organization and you're obviously out there working hard to build a new community too. So how do you go about identifying people? Yeah, so my situation is a little different, um, but also I think valid in that um, what Naomi is doing is, you know, in person, real, and, and with my foundation, my community is mostly virtual. Um, so most of what we do is online and I started with my friends, um, my friends and family and asked them to get involved or if they wanted to get involved. And to your point, I don't always ask, but I tell my stories over and over and over so i'm just on facebook telling a story and then people think it's a great story and then oh how can i donate so i don't think that that's a bad way to start if you don't have anything like an event or something is to just start saying hey i'm involved in my organization or this is my story i wanted to let you know can you help me out it's a valid cause and you know kind of don't forget that virtual community as well I think that's also, um, I love that, Marie, because it's also important, obviously, with the world we've lived in the last few years, where sometimes our events themselves have to be postponed or, in some cases, even uh, canceled or held only virtually. So I think we never want to overlook uh, that virtual experience because you also probably have networks across the country. We all do, right? So you can still pull people into your community if you at least have some element of virtual as well so i think that's really great anything else I just the other three of you you want to add anything when you're really trying to identify and get started well um building off of that with the virtual community and your social networks sharing your stories out there you'll get larger reach but also asking friends can you share my post can you share my story because their network is larger and it's an easier way for them to grow and they can easily my friend is doing this it's great or i've participated in this you know, and it just starts to expand larger and larger. So never, you know, forget about that because um, that reach is farther out there um, than you think it is. That's great. And the only thing that I would add is don't be discouraged. Mm -hmm. You're you're going to feel discouraged if it doesn't happen as fast as you want it to. Don't yeah. compare yourself to others who are doing it. You know, they may have, everybody has their own story and their own way of doing it. And you just being in motion and doing it is a success. So don't forget to stop and pat yourself on the back for just doing it. That's a great reminder. Thank you, Leslie. And since you spoke, I was gonna throw my next question to you. Um, so I work with Leslie uh, pretty regularly. And so I know she does a great job with this, but now you guys have talked a little bit about how you identify um, new people for your community. But Leslie, are you uh, able to talk a little bit about how do you identify the best fit for them or role in the community? Like, how do you go about now you're starting to find people or people are kind of raising their hands saying like, I want to help. How do you work with them to figure out the best fit? Um, first, it takes time. It takes a lot of time and we want things to happen instantaneously. But as like, Naomi and the rest of them said it's building relationships so I meet people how I do it usually is I meet people we go to lunch or we have coffee. And I ask them, you know how they're interested in serving so that I can put them kind of in the best fit now dancing with our stars is what our our large gala is and people are petrified of dancing on stage. So, I mean, that's basically what I'm asking them to do. If they're a community leader and they, we what, what we wanna do is we want them to expose the Children's Tumor Foundation to their network and invite them. So if it's, you know, how, how to find the best fit, well, it's, it's really finding the best people. So a lot of people make recommendations, oh, so-and-so should be a star. Well, actually I ask a lot of tough questions and mm -hmm. some people are uh, just needing to self-promote themselves for whatever reason. And that's not necessarily the best fit for us. The best fit is somebody who's gonna be a friend raiser, who's gonna be a fundraiser, who's going to be willing to do media and marketing um, things that we do. So it's not just having a warm body. Now in the first two years, I just <laughs> needed warm bodies because <laughs> we had to get it started. Yeah. Um, but then once you get it started, it's actually being very purposeful on yeah. how and who you have involved. Thank you, I appreciate it. And I heard you say the most important thing is sit down, talk to them, ask ask them how they want it's to be involved. All, and it's then, all about yeah. the relationships. Absolutely. 
Anyone want to add anything to that about identifying the best fit? I, so I, it parallels, I think, um, to that question. It might not be a direct answer, but as you're talking about, you know, the first couple of years getting those warm bodies, I'll say like that's where I'm at. <laughs> first, I had to research NF when my son was diagnosed about two and a half years ago. Um, and then you have family and friends saying, what the heck is that? And I'm like, do whatever you do, don't Google. Like, let's let, let I, I will tell you, and it, it, it takes a minute um, as a parent, which I'm sure some of you know, to to get comfortable with the fact that your child is going through this. Um, and so for me, as like a very basic step, I made awareness. Like I have set, I think, um, goals for myself on an annual basis, I would say. And I use the month of May because um, Sam's birthday is May 31st. I find that like a weird coincidence, right? But still, so we use that month in our family to, you know, to build awareness. There was one year I'd asked that, and I'm very specific about asking them to do like very specific things, right? Like the first year I was comfortable enough. I was like, hey, maybe you guys show me your CTF gear. So I shared the website. Anyone who bought t-shirts or hats or whatever sent me a photo and I put that on social media for the month of May. It was really cool. We did one every year. And then, you know, now I'm to the point where I'm helping to plan, you know, the walk in September. But I think um, before you can establish, like Leslie's talking about, that really core group of people, you kind of have to share what, what NF, what CTF is all about. Um, bring your friends and family along with you and see who kind of makes it. Like if that sounds kind of strange, see who's willing to put in the time and the effort to really be your advocate, your kid's advocate, that sort of thing. So small steps, right? <laughs> Maybe one day we'll host a, a gala too. <laughs> but did you, Sean, did you look yeah. like you were going to say something before? Yeah, with that, it's also when you're starting, meet people where they are. Um, find other charities or events that have a similar mindset, you know, another type of connection. It's a great way to just start and meet new people. While Cupid is a little bit different, we partner with more bars or um, we're looking to partner with the Santa Speedo Run. You know, it's still in winter, a little bit out there, but it's all fundraising for a charity as well in their local community. So it's finding those other slightly, you know, one step off connection to make it work and come together, um, but meet people where they are with a similar mindset. Yeah, go ahead, Marie. I was going to say two. One is ask people what they do in their work, in their lives, what kind of skill sets they have. You know, it's a little bit of an interview process because maybe someone's great at creating Prezi presentations, but they're not thinking that's something that a foundation needs or that you need for Dancing with the Stars or whatever. And maybe it's something on your list and you're like, I don't need to do that. So kind of reverse it. And not only what would you like to do, but what can you do? What are, what, are, what are some skills that you have that you might not even think are related to this and just kind of, you know, you start a little inventory, ooh, sorry, start a little inventory of who can do what. Great, great tip. Um, one thing that I was asked too to share, I think you, uh, a lot of you know, there's several staff around the room here and out in the hallways and everywhere. So I think when you're thinking about building a community, um, make sure you reach out to CTF and tell them, like, I'm excited to get something going, whether it's an event or, you know, Leslie's worked really hard and they're starting the first NF adult clinic in the country in Little Rock, Arkansas. So like, you can see a need and you can fill it. And whether it's whatever kind of community you're trying to build, whatever you're trying to achieve, make sure you reach out to CTF. If you know somebody, call them. If they're not the person, they're going to point you to one of their colleagues and help you out. Or uh, but we, we're just here as a resource. We want to be here. If you're ready to go, we're ready to help. So just never forget to reach out and let us help you. OK, uh, before we move on so that I, we were kind of talking a little bit there about early stages, getting a community started. I want to make sure um, a couple, my colleagues have a microphone. Does anybody have before we move into like now you've built one and sustaining it? Does anybody have any more questions about a new community? They're happy to help. Don't be shy. Please don't be shy. This is for you guys. <laughs> anybody? Okay. Please don't be shy, but I want to say one more before we move on. Any other, if you're new community building, any other things that, that you have thought of, ladies, that you want to share or like, oh, I wish I would have. Anything else on new? I would say just remember you're not alone. Even those that have communities started where you guys are with a new community, 
and reaching out to staff, whether it's, you know, letting them know they can point you to someone who's been in your shoes or done a similar event and leverage everyone else in this community to like get their learnings, what worked, what didn't, and then make it work for yourself. Yeah. The only other thing I would share, and I have it actually in a different section, but it's what I call the three P's, persistence, passion, and perseverance. That's great. It, it, it takes all three and, and you'll hear more, but, but persistence, my husband loves to say that I'm persistent. Um, <laughs> and then I have heard that, you know, when, when we did start up or when I asked somebody after they've done Dancing with Our Stars, I'm like, why did you decide to do it? And they're like, well, you're so passionate and you just talk about it and you just like, you just want to make a difference. And I wanted to make a difference because you wanted to make a difference. And, but those three P's just try to Keep those in your back pocket, they'll help. I love it. <laughs> also, like, don't be afraid of the word no. You're going to hear it, but don't give up because someone is going to make that a yes. And yes. I think when you're starting out and you have this hope and this dream of building something, just don't give up. It's going to not all be easy, but I think that was really hard for me is when you get those no's and not to look at it as a negative thing, but just that that wasn't right for you. There's something else that's a better fit and you're gonna find it. So just, I think that's a huge thing for me too. That's so. a great one, Naomi. And, and you know, uh, we've probably all heard this phrase too, the, the no could just mean not now. Like if you're building a community, as that groundswell and people start getting more excited and seeing what you're doing, they might've said no early on. But later on, they're going to see what you're doing. They're going to see all the passion and all the others, and they're going to get excited too. Yes, great. We have a question at the back. <laughs> oh, is it working? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, I guess question more about getting started and where are you placing your information for folks to see that that's drawing them in? Like, are you taking out radio advertisements? Like, we don't have an NF clinic anywhere near <laughs> where I am, so I don't have the option to have those folks help out um, and it's we don't have a whole lot of advertising in like our hospitals even like we can't just put posters up places so how are you reaching other folks with nf that you know i i know of my mom and like maybe five other people in my area that have nf so like i need to to find them how do i find them <laughs> I, I think a great way rebecca at, at the in the marketing department the um can help reach out to producers at your local tv station and it's just getting a segment i think probably everybody up here at one point has done a little tv segment and and it's really hard for people that have a hard time public speaking or thinking about being on tv but it really does make a huge difference and people in the community will reach out to the tv station and say hey i need to talk to that person and they'll connect us so that would be my suggestion is trying to get on a segment. You know, they, they'll have different segments like for medical or for events or something like that. And Rebecca or anybody on our comms team or any of the staff too could help you brainstorm like what is the story if you're going to try to pitch it to any kind of media, but I think it's always the, the most important thing right is having a story to tell and I think we have a storytelling session it's either happened or happening so. It's a good way. Anything else anyone would? Uh, yeah, Marie. Um, I was just going to say that if, you, if you're doing an event or you're trying to plan a fundraising event or start, you know, start your own run or this or that, is remember, we all want people to be connected to the mission, but they don't have to be connected to the mission to join your cause from at the beginning, right? So there's usually going to be three groups of people who are going to come to your fundraiser NF people, right? People who want to support that cause. Your friends and family who want to support you, right? So maybe, you know, if you don't know all the NF people in the community, you can get your friends and family together and go, hey, you know I'm affected, my child's affected. Will you join me? Like Aaron was saying, will you join me? And then third, is it a fun event, right? So now let's market the events of I keep on saying running in your underwear, but, uh, but you know, is it a fun event? Maybe I don't know anything about NF and I don't know you, but that sounds like a heck of a good time. So maybe I'll get 20 people to do that. And how can I incentivize, you know, one runner to bring 10 people along? Maybe I give them a discount or that, you know what I mean? So I think you want to come in from each different way 
and eventually everything is going to intermesh right when I joined team and training LLS I was not connected to the mission at all. I was tremendously connected to the mission within six months um, and then tremendously connected to a community of people, so I just think you know take it go at it from all angles. You you basically retold it is Sean's story. I mean, she said it right. She came to us with no connection ten years ago. She she has a poster she made. So I'm not gonna I won't steal her thunder totally. But she said you know she said uh, came for the party, stayed for the cause. And here she's a leader in the NF community without a personal connection for ten years. I mean that's I pretty that. fantastic. That. All right. I was gonna oh. say um, in addition to that as your you know, especially for an unaffected group, because you can find the internal network, you were saying you didn't have a place to put posters, find a coffee shop that has posters up, or your local newspaper that might put an ad out and says this event is upcoming, or we're doing this, and sharing it in different ways, it doesn't have to be, you know, necessarily a hospital or a clinic, but anywhere that can put a poster up or, you know, put flyers out if you do more postcard style for people to grab and go um and you reach out to it in different formats as well yeah oh yeah oh go ahead oh connie yeah, so i just a couple of comments on what i've observed over the years and watching leslie pull together the events that, that she has done uh, the endurance events and and the dancing with our stars it one of the things i've noticed about her behavior is she is a project manager and when you when you take on an event whatever that event may be i think you have to put that hat on and so as a project manager when leslie really started her very first fundraisers she was uh, the be all do all because no one else was was really in the know for what what needed to happen but pretty quickly as 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 things moved along in the first three four five years she realized that she didn't have all the skills necessary to really make the events, whether it was an endurance event or um, you know the first attempts at, at a banquet, those sort of things. She didn't have all those skills, and so what became very important to her was bringing in people that filled her gaps where she had skill gaps, and I think that's what really helped when she realized that and started bringing in folks to help, whether they were affected or not to do small things that filled really larger gaps for her skill sets, we started seeing more success. And she realized that and really uh, came to value that. And still today, when she seeks out um, you know, help, that's what she's doing is filling a gap. Uh, and then you know, one, of, one of Leslie's goals is to make this um, you know, a legacy that continues. And so one of the greatest challenges as you get down the road is, okay, how do I set this up so that it never ends? And that's the gap she's working, you know, she's working hard to fill that gap today so that it keeps going. Yeah. But recognizing your own weaknesses as a leader, as someone who really is going to be very persistent and pursue this and then bring people in affected or not, who can, uh, can fill those skill gaps is really important. And it's helped her tremendously. This is perfect because that's a great segue, Connie, because I do want to take us into like you're building it now, like how do you sustain and grow and then um, Leslie I did have a question for you so i'm gonna I am going to throw it to you because that was a nice segue so you find these people to fill gaps. But um, there is a lot when people raise their hand and say they want to help, we do need to hold them accountable, right? If they say they're going to do something, you kind of, you're counting on them. You're, you're, you know, you're taking them at their word and you're counting on them. So Leslie, if these are volunteers and you're a volunteer, like how do you hold people accountable to what they say they want to do to help in this community? It's funny because this is the worst question for me because I am not a leader because I have a hard time holding people accountable. Like, because I don't want to impose. And so my nature is like, I would love for you to help if you had an hour. And even if you didn't like 30 minutes would be okay. And then you show up and you give me 10. And it's like, okay, you know, but I, I'm just bad at that. So just like Connie said, it's finding somebody else. So building a committee of people so that a committee chair can go to that person and say, hey, you said you were going to reach out to three people did you have a chance to reach out to those three people so i'm i'm always a little bit too soft i know y'all find that hard to believe <laughs> but um so it's having somebody to fill the gap that can yeah 
Any other thoughts? So accountability it is a big thing, right? And it's volunteers. So any other thoughts or, or tips that you guys have done when you give people assignments or they take something on? And how do you keep them accountable? I'll say, I'll say I'm, I'm not the expert panel, but I will say I've had some experience with this over the years. And I think, you know, it's just communication, right? Communication is what you've got to do. And you just have to reach out and ask the questions. Just you've got to just talk to people and find out where they're at. And then if they say, oh, I feel so bad, I, I didn't get to that. And you can try to find out what's getting in their way. Maybe there's something that's getting in the way and you just need to know that and you can help them, you know, work around that or find a different fit if maybe it wasn't the right fit that they thought it would be or you thought it would be. So it's realistic, just that talking. Realistic expectations, setting those yeah. up first, outlining what you want them to do very yes. clearly. And if they're not doing it, it's like leading them to recognize that they're not doing it. So lead with questions yeah. and um, to make them see that maybe they're not, they haven't held up their end of the bargain yet and how they can do that. And and if they can't, give them the opportunity to say they can't do it and that you need somebody else to help with that. I would also say, as we all know, life happens. So yeah. when you're asking for deadlines, maybe just ask for it a week earlier than you actually need it. <laughs> That way, if something happens or there's a delay, you still have wiggle room, you have some balance um, versus giving them the final deadline. We all know life comes up, things change, and we all have to be a little bit flexible. So having that kind of built into whatever you're planning is always a good one as well. Um, one of the other things, obviously, once we identify people, oh, Shannon, did you, sorry, I don't mean to call, do you have a question? I thought you were gonna ask something earlier now. Okay, sorry. I just didn't want to miss you if you had, a, okay, okay, no problem. Um, okay, where was I? Um, so another thing, we've talked a lot, right? You put a group around you, you find a committee or your building, you've got a couple people. Um, how do you use your volunteers or like the first people to come into your community? How do you use them to then grow the community? I think like what we did for ourselves, you invite their family, you have them get their family and friends involved, you have them reach out and start doing mimicking what you did. It's like the wave and the, you know, the rock in the water and it just keeps oh, yeah. trickling out, you know, you just keep involving those close to you and those that are wanting to support you. Each person has those people and once you get three people together, then you have a bigger group than what you had before and I think that just keeps building from there. Yeah. Sean, no, I was gonna say, I think that's about right. I mean, once you get people involved, we all tend to see that someone's passionate about something, they might have someone else in their community that's also as passionate that you may not know. So it is just more that ripple effect um, and kind of going from there. And when people do try to step away, or it's a, a model that we use in Dancing with Our Stars, is we ask them to replace themselves. So each year you get the six stars, and then you ask them, it's like, all right, now you know what it took for you to do that. Who would you recommend we reach out to? And it's just that networking, having those people, or even if they're not stepping away, it's like, all right, we need to add to the team. You know what it takes. You got any uh, suggestions? Yeah. And I think we've talked, you know, life happens. And so even for all of you, as you're like the community builder, you're going to someday want to transition and, and probably do something else. So I love succession planning for for all levels of the community. Like think about who can step up and, and take your roles someday. It's always really important. Um, any questions coming from the room at this point? Anybody have? Oh, yes. This already mentioned before. I just we came. We talked about it a little bit just before you came in, I think. Okay, about forming your own Facebook page for your state. Yes. Oh well, we didn't talk about that, but. Okay, and uh, there is a danger to that. That you know, you don't want to put a tagline of CTF because they don't have time or the staff to vet everything that's posted on that. That's why you form your own Facebook page for your state. And you wouldn't believe how it will spread. We have one for Iowa, and there's a few of our of our members. We vet requests to join and we vet posts, and we that's how we spread the word about our walk, and we get a lot of response. It looks like Michelle, are you gonna? 
Hi guys, I have a I have a quick comment thought. We're on the um, Leslie has been you know Leslie and Naomi have done something that we wish we could do everywhere, and and we're not a chapter based organization, but we do need boots on the ground, and so we're trying to pilot something that's called local leadership boards, which are a little bit modeled after what Leslie has been able to build. Um, and and so we've done this in a few we're piloting it in a few places and one of the things that we've done in um, in the LA area is just bring people together virtually and there's a committee that kind of helps to drive bringing the NF community together and some of our donors together who want to be more connected and who want to do more things and so and it doesn't have to be just in LA it can be across the state or it can be regionally based upon the population so. You know, Kim, uh, our colleague Kim Robinson in, and Connie are spearheading that. So if there's interest from any of you on that, just let me know and, and we'll start those conversations. Um, like I said, it's piloting, it's, it's small and we're, we're trying it in a few places to see if it works, but you know, we've got to build the boots on the ground, build the community so that we can drive more awareness and ultimately drive more revenue. So one Thank thing you. about what Michelle was saying about the leadership board in Arkansas, we called it the advisory board. So I had to get some clout in our community to get these uh, big community leaders. So, you know, you're getting some of the largest philanthropic names to participate in your organization, but we had to kind of build a reputation that would make it inviting for these big philanthropists or business owners to participate and get that buy in from them. So we formed an advisory board and we don't have our I mean we're all under the umbrella of the foundation so everything we do goes through the you know just like our national board but it you know we're under that umbrella so we don't have to worry about bylaws or any of that kind of stuff it's an advisory board mm -hmm. and people when you ask them their advice this is something I forgot to mention how do you get them involved you ask them their advice you ask them you know what they think about something people like to tell you what they think about things <laughs> and then you ask them to help is that's a great idea can you help me implement that so this advisory board is how we really built and sustain that's great thank you question pam or was it okay stretch it <laughs> um the other thing that's uh I think about we've talked a bit about like events that happen, but you know there's all types of communities you guys could want to go back and do something else in your community, but there will be like highs and lows in seasons right, so if you are trying to build a community around walk or NFE or something or something else it's going to be sort of seasonal right like there's going to be bigger times and lesser times so i wonder if any of you have advice like when it's let's just call it off season off season for whatever it is you're focused on how do you keep the momentum going how do you keep people engaged um, so that they don't you know sort of forget about the community and maybe the slower times any advice or tips you'd give there i would say from our standpoint, we do try to keep posting on our social media. It may not be as regularly as we do when we have the event coming up or we're in season, but we share stuff for you know NF Awareness Month. We share other things that come up um, in the community and make sure that we're still, like our page is still popping up. Our group is still showing up on people's pages. I think also if you have um, high fundraisers or you know people that are normally involved, shoot them emails reach out see how things are going see if they have any updates that way you're still keeping that relationship alive or even doing other smaller events doing a promotional thing most of our stuff we already have a date or we have the registration site live after our events end you can go to another place and be like stay there have a table do a little promotion um people like to plan nowadays because they'll have vacations so it's not too early to get out there and just like still be a face in the community and showing up at other events that are a part of the community as well. Marie, yeah. I was just gonna say also, if you if it's a group that gets together to plan or to plan your event or whatever, keep that going socially. Yes. Um, you know, even if you're not quite working on it after the event, get together, celebrate how great the event was, you know, and, and maybe for a couple of happy hours or whatever you're not even talking about the event but you're saying oh yeah in may we're going to gear up again you know but keep that connection socially especially so they don't go elsewhere right because people who want to be involved are going to find something to get involved in 
right? So while there's a gap, they might go off to something else never to return because now they're enmeshed in that community. So, you know, just keep it together any way you can. Have a happy hour, get together and make a charcuterie board, whatever it is, right? And just keep them kind of together as a community of friendship too. Yeah, I love that. I see Caroline and Kara in the room and I bet they could answer this question very well too, but I was gonna add, um, use that downtime or your slower time. So when we have, when we're affected by NF, we live this 24 seven. So it's like, we're never in our off season, but maybe when we're in our event off season, it's the perfect time to build processes to make things more effective for when you're in the heat of the moment and you don't have time to do that. It's also the perfect time to build relationships, take people to coffee and, you know, yeah. talk to them on the phone or something. Cause when you're busy, you don't have time to build as much. Um, and it's just being in relationship. That is the time to steward. It's the time to thank. You can never thank people enough, whether, you know, you might have to blow a little smoke up somebody's skirt or something, you know, as if they did just a little thing, but you want to thank them for it and kind of make it a little bit bigger than you need to sometimes. But all that to say is just keep working the relationships and building new ones. I love it. And that, oh, yes, Michelle. We said because everyone on the panel, other than Marie, who isn't, who's um, hopefully now going to become involved with CTF, um, has a staff partner. And in our lunch and learn that we had just before this, we were talking about how important it is, that staff partnership. And what Leslie's talking about, absolutely, we need you guys on the ground helping to take people out for coffee and do that. But talk to your staff partner, say, hey, can you plan, can you come like, you know, once a quarter and come out and, and maybe we can get meeting with you know, this doctor or this sponsor or try to get in front of a few people who've been supporting us for ages. That's really important, right? Because then it also builds your partnership with the, your staff partner, but it also helps to build that relationship with that other volunteer and that other donor in uh, with CTF and helps to build lifelong donors, which is obviously what we're all about. And I, that is not necessarily a plug, but there is another session all about like making lifelong donors coming up this afternoon at four. Great. Thanks, Michelle. Oh, looks like Connie's got something. Oh, and then Carolyn. Yeah, just just a comment. This is a great conversation. I, uh, Leslie hadn't mentioned this yet, so I'm going to throw it out there because I see her do this. Uh, and and the off season thing is, I there isn't an off season. There's just a change of season. Right. And so, yeah, she goes uh, through the implementation, whatever event she's working on. And then there's the thank you season, and she's talked about that. But one of the things I see her do that's very personal, and what I've found is that it's also very effective. I don't know how she does it, but she knows people's birthdays. <laughs> birthdays have always been nice important birthday. to Leslie. And <laughs> when we have in, uh, those who are engaging with us and really helping us out, she is very intentional on birthdays to remind them how thankful we are for what they do year in and year out. And, you know, not only on social media will she post about that, but she will also make a personal call, text message, whatever the person, however they like receiving their information, she does it. And so that that thank you season is always, always uh, post event, yeah. whatever the event is. And uh, I just I've just noticed that that makes a huge difference. The engagement goes up and every time you post something, one of those thank yous, happy birthdays the entire network for that individual sees that and it's a reminder she posts it with information about our events and it's a constant reminder and it flows throughout the year and, and I think it makes a huge difference birthdays are important and I don't, I don't know that's just something Leslie grew up with and she has pushed that into how she runs this and I think it's been very effective. So everybody, make sure before you leave, you give Leslie your birthday. She's <laughs> <laughs> she just had one herself, I think. Over here. Yeah. I was just going to say um, one thing that's helped us a lot is because we all know we're very busy moms, family members, whatever you are, um, is there are students that want to get involved and be a part of the process and they want to learn more about volunteering and being a part of their community and whatever. And this year we had a student volunteer who did all of our um, intake and when we would get a check 
she would send them an immediate thank you note and then log that information for us. And she got service hours in her school curriculum. And she was also able to learn about something she knew nothing about. And she and her dad spent probably 30 hours volunteering their time for us this season. And that was just a new avenue that we had never taken before. But That's great. they're out there and they want to help. That's awesome. Uh, Lydia, I think Shannon does have something over here. And while she's, she's right. taking the mic over there, yeah. Shannon, I was just going to say, uh, somebody had asked about how to advertise and that kind of thing. And I was going to say college bulletin boards, intranet mm -hmm. uh, with different corps and orgs, that kind of thing. Um, and those student groups that need service hours are great add-ins for volunteers. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Hello. Um, you were asking what you ways to reach new families and you know if you don't know people in your community and one of the things that I don't actually have someone in my family with NF. Um, I have a bumper sticker on my car and I cannot tell you how many people stop me and say how do you have someone with NF do you know I, I have a friend with someone with NF and that bumper sticker has i've probably talked to 25 different people in the last year or two that you know so I take advantage of your CTF gear, your mugs, your bumper stickers. My husband and I both have one in our cars, um, but that those pieces, people see them, they notice them and they stop me. I've had notes left on my window. Oh, wow. I tell them about the walk, I connect them with Jess, like it makes a huge difference. So. Little, That's amazing, that's a great job. This is the other thing, share other tips. I, I love that you guys are sharing some things. We've got our panel, but we love hearing, I mean, they're learning and growing, we're all learning and growing. So if you have other ideas, please share them. Thank you, Shannon. I was, that's great. Just, I was just looking this up on my phone. I wasn't being rude, I wanted to make sure it still existed. <laughs> um, but if you're having an event, I don't know if you all know about Cole's Cares. Um, so uh, if you can uh, apply at your local coal store, and if you have multiple coal stores, you can apply at all of them. They all have their own person. And if they agree, and they do children's stuff, so it's all children's stuff. If they agree, they pay you to let their employees volunteer at your events. Uh, so you will get a, a, do a donation, it was $500, and they will also send volunteers from the store at your event. So. Anyway, I just had to look and see if it was still a thing. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, go ahead. So one of the things I was wondering if feasibility-wise, I do fundraising year-round for, for the CTF. Is there a way, like, for those of us who do that, to have a personalized donation page that we could use for our social media? So, like, for example, right now, on my Facebook and on my two different TikTok accounts, I have a link to not only the CTF, but a link to my the, the walk that I'm participating in because my state doesn't have one, so I'm doing Denver. But is there a way that we could get, say, a permanent um, personalized fundraising page that we could use? I would say this. I may not be the best one to answer it, but we will find out an answer to that. It seems like it's a doable thing. When it comes to like the cycles of our walk programs and our established programs, they sort of have a start and finish, and then we, we try not to leave it closed, if you will, too long. But we can find that out. We can talk about it because we've got like choose your own challenge. We've got maybe Michelle is going to help me, but I, I f feels like something like we're always there and we're always fundraising. It's easy enough to have a page. But go ahead, Michelle, please. Yeah, I, and I, I, so the answer there is yes, but the only challenge is we any any page that's going to be open just generally will raise money that goes specifically to not it's not going to be directed to your walk all year round or your run all year round. But we can absolutely set you up with a page where you could fundraise whenever and however you want. I want to add one thing on the fundraising page so each year like if we did a different endurance thing I went to GoDaddy and got my own like web address my own URL to keep it easy so like hope for NF. And then I redirect that to whatever campaign I'm working on. My 
personal page is endurenf.org. And so like if I'm doing a marathon, um, I'll redirect it through GoDaddy to that page and then I'll change it once that page ends or that campaign ends and I'll redirect it maybe to Dancing with Our Stars or something. So it's That's it's a, good... a it's a really and it's not too expensive. It's about maybe $15 a year to have a URL through GoDaddy and you just click redirect it. We, it looks like we have another comment. I, I am yeah, I, I have to be a comment. Um, at, uh, Facebook has a thing where like around your birthday you can put in and say that you're and I always do CTF and I put down a mountain I've been able to raise like two thousand dollars for that also they also we um they have a page where you can put in that you're doing a walk and set it out there for people to donate and you just put in a little bit about what NF is and I've done that it's great. We do. We uh, Emily Crabtree. I'll give her a plug. She's not in. I don't think she's in here today, but she oversees too. We do have the you know donate your birthday through Facebook for CTF specifically. So it's easy enough to do on your own, or you can work through. Emily can give some tips if you haven't done it before. So thank you. It's always a great reminder. There's so many things you can kind of donate and do. Alyssa, yeah. I'll say this with the caveat that um, the link is broken on the website right now, but I'm going to create the URL and fix the URL right now. But if you go to ctf.org slash fight NF your way, F-I-G-H-T-N-F-W-Y-O, oh, no, Y-O-U-R-W-A-Y, <laughs> sorry, I can't spell inside my head. Um, that will go to something that will have an annual one all year round, and you can create your own page right on there inside of Classy. So. Great. Oh, right. There you go. So fight NF your way. CTF.org. Fight NF your way. Write it down. And Alyssa's working on getting the broken link fixed. Um, this has been a great session. I really feel we could sit here the rest of the afternoon and come up with great ideas and tips and ways to help each other. But I think our time is up. Michelle, am I on track with it? It's time to wrap. Is it? I think we're at 150. Okay, I just uh, if you would all join me really quickly, I thank all of you for coming again and being in the room and sharing your um, your tips and your expertise. We are appreciating you joining me, but would you also please uh, help thank my uh, beautiful panelists for their help today. Thank you.